Good morning and happy Sunday. This is Katie Carney from Katie Carney Stitching. This is my floss tube number 30 and it is the 27th of September in 2020. Uh, I hope you guys are all well and I just wanted to come in and, and chat a little bit. The light is not great today. It's misty out and foggy and cloudy and humid and going to be nearly 80 today. Um, but I didn't get to check in last weekend because I was very busy and I have a lot I want to show you and then I want to put it away. <laughs> um, so anyway, I hope you guys are all well. Uh, like I said, it's in the 70s. It's around 9 a.m. The light is weird and here we are. <laughs> um, so a quick update. <laughs> After my last video where I talked about the mouse living in the trunk of my car, I, um, my car got hit in the middle of the night. So I, um, the last couple, like the last month or so, I've been going to bed super early and then I like die when I go to sleep. I don't know what's going on. I just, I fall asleep and I don't move until the, I've just been so tired. So I fell asleep around like nine or 10 o'clock and in the middle of the night, I hear my grandmother screaming my name. And I was like, what? So I like fall out of bed and she's like, somebody's at the door, somebody hit your car. So I'm like grabbing my shoes, I think. And like I trip down the stairs, I don't have a sweater on and I go out and this guy's like, listen, somebody hit your car, he hit mine too. I'm not, I gotta, can you call 911? And of course I did. Um, he turns out the guy who came to my door, he had been hit, but he was not a legal driver, which is a real problem in Scranton. This is not the first time I've had someone who can't legally drive involved with my car. So anyway, the, I live on a street in a neighborhood. Um, it's like a grid. It goes, Avenue, 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 all the way up the hill, and then there's streets. And then we have I-shaped alleys in between those avenues. So I live, so I'm on South Irving, which I probably shouldn't tell people, and then there's a dead end. And the guy hit my car, ran the stop sign, we're assuming, and then figured out it was a dead end, stopped the car, turned it off, and left it. In the middle of the street, so I called 911. My I went up, I went back in the house. I got a, a phone. I called 911. I put a sweater on and shoes. My neighbor across the street came out, and we went and looked at the car. And the cops came, and I was like a disaster. It was like one o'clock in the morning. I was sleeping. <laughs> and the one cop he goes, "Well, ma'am, did you witness this?" And I was like, "Officer, I am." 33 years old and not a criminal. I went to bed at nine o'clock last night. Of course I didn't witness this at one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and then, so there, the, the, the two other cops went to look for this guy who was obviously on foot. And the young guy stayed with me to take my police report because he was the first one on scene. So he's taking my information and he's like, okay, what's your height? And I tell him, and you know, it looks like you have blonde hair. And I was like, Sure, it's one o'clock in the morning, blonde's fine. And then he's like, and what's your weight? And I was like, what? My what? And he's like, your weight. And I was like, why? And then I was like, I'm just gonna guesstimate and if a judge wants to put me on a scale even though I'm not a criminal and somebody hit my car while I was sleeping, that's fine. And he's like, ma'am. I really don't care. I just can't put the police report in without a wait. And I was like, well, you should guess. <laughs> it was not good. I was, it was one o'clock in the morning. Don't ask a lady how much she weighs. I don't want to tell you that. I want to go back to bed. But then I was like up. I couldn't go back to sleep. I'm like texting Mark and he's like, you have to go to sleep. And I was like, I can't. So I went into work for a couple hours the next day because we were opening our conference registration and then at like 11 o'clock I was like I'm done I have to call the insurance company still I have to get a rental car and I can't keep my eyes open so I came home laid down got a rental car this was all on Friday of last week dude my car was fixed 
on Thursday of the next week. Like it was the fastest car fixing I've ever had. I'm, I was thrilled. Um, so long story short, parking in front of my house is a bad idea. Somebody's very likely to hit your car. Uh, they haven't found the guy. They probably never will. I'm sure he's in the wind far, far away. Um, I've been hit. I was in a bad accident coming home from work once by someone driving without a driver's license. My grandmother's car got hit by somebody. My dad's been hit twice in front of his house. We just, we have a major problem with either underinsured, uninsured, or unlicensed, or all of the above. The driver's in Scranton, and, um... I think the pandemic has definitely not helped that. People are drinking more. They're making less than stellar decisions about driving home. Uh, and they're plowing into cars. Uh, the person who hit me had hit a string of cars already. It, 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 I, I don't want to say it is what it is because it's not okay. It's, By the way, if you're driving illegally, not okay. Also, drinking and driving, not cool. Like, you're not cool. But anyway, um, then my friend Susie turned 35 last week and we always do like small parties with just the girls. Um, and we haven't been doing that cause there's a pandemic, but, uh, two of us got together, th well, three of us all together got together and we ordered pizza hut. Oh my God. It was so good. And we did tie dye, um, on my back porch because we could socially distance out there. Um, I planned it all for her because I try to always do something nice. Uh, Tie-dye is not for me. It was a tremendous amount of work and it was wet and it wasted so much water, so much. And by the time we were done, like my feet hurt from standing and shaking the bottles and setting it all up. And I was just like, I, I never want to do this again. My friends had a great time. I did a lot of the setup work, which is fine, but I just, I never again. Unless they want to do it, and I just sit there and don't do, like, I just do the tie-dyeing. Um, but I did, I was going to wait till the end, but we had some leftover dye, and I have all that Ada that was given to me, so I dyed a couple pieces of Ada just for the heck of it. Um, so, here's one. I have no idea what I'm going to do with any of these. They're very pretty. This one's got a couple speckles on the back that I really like. Um, or if I'll ever use them, but they are pretty and they make me happy. So there's one. And I had white Ada that I was had no idea what to do with. This one is with The Last of the Black. Um, I had one piece that came out really badly and I did just toss that. So that's black. And then these two are my favorites because they're more like still light colored. So there's this one. Didn't cut straight. <laughs> I was just cutting outside really quickly. And then I love this one. So I spilled some. That's just flakes of the dye that I accidentally spilled on the table and it picked it up. And I love, I love this one. Um, so hopefully I'll find something for that someday. So that's my, that's my tie-dyeing experience that I'm very glad is over. But we had a, a really wonderful day. It was a great, great day. I'm so glad that they came over. We ate so much pizza. Um, I'm never going to be thin again. <sighs> but it is what it is. Um, so that was, it was great. Happy birthday, Susie. I know you don't watch these, but happy birthday. All right, nine minutes in, let's talk about stitching. I have an FFO. Uh, I've been working on this on and off. Um, there's a lot more stitches in it than you might think. And it is, You Had Me at Pumpkin Spice by Heartstring Samplery. Also, Beth Twist um, had checked in on Instagram. They're home safely, and it looks like the fires have spared them. So, yay! And I think most of our... Um, cross stitch friends who live out there have been spared so phew um so 2020 2020 y'all so anyway uh you had me at pumpkin spice i did the pillow here it is so 
I was very careful, but there are a couple little mistakes. Um, there was not room to put the other end of at in. Um, and then one of my pumpkins is a little smaller, but that's okay. I love this. And then I used a orange plaid from Hobby Lobby. I did not trim the fabric at all. It just happened to be the right size. And I just sewed it down and I whip stitched whip stitched it closed. There we go. I got there. Um, this is a mix of poly pellets and fiber fill. Um, I bought the poly pellets on a whim yesterday and the fiber fill, I used everything I had and then I just kept putting the fiber, the pellets in, hoping that it would make the pillow stand up and it does. Um, so it could use some more filling, but I'm happy with it. YouTube, yay! Also, uh, Rocio from Cocohama Stitchery, she did a great YouTube video about how to become like floss tube famous. Um, and really just how to how to floss tube. And she made a point to say, you know, you could just use a thumbnail that you want. You don't have to pick from the YouTube ones. But she doesn't understand that this is a low budget floss tube. <laughs> and that I have no skills. <laughs> anyway, Rocio, that was a really great movie. I'm going not movie uh, video. Uh, hopefully I'll remember to find it and link it, but if not, it's Kokohama Stitchery and um, she she does great like little tutorials and they're very fun and down to earth and I highly recommend. So anyway, that's my FFO. Um, I did a lot of this laying in bed. Like I said, I've been exhausted and I've just I've never stitched in bed and I have like taken to my bed and I did this in hand and like, that's all filling. It took forever, but it was worth it. Um, I thought about just not doing that because I was like, do I really need to? And I, I'm glad I did do it. So, um, I highly recommend her patterns are beautiful. Um, well written, easy to read. Great. Then I have a finished object and it is an ornament, which had a good bajillion stitches. Uh, this is a Mill Hill Snowbells, and let's see, what can I do to make this better? Does that help? Yes. So that's my little guy. Um, guys, if you've ever finished a Mill Hill kit, please leave me a comment below about how you did it, and um, like, did you back it? What do you do? I need help. Help a sister out. Thank you. But anyway, um, this is number 11. I am behind. It'll be okay, though. Uh, he was a lot of stitching. And the beading, although not terribly slow, is also not, like, wicked fast either. Um, but this was my first beading, and I'm, I'm feeling pretty proud of that. Like, I feel like now I can do, you know, my Lady of the Flag, and then other ladies that I'm planning to do. So yay for that. And then I have two whips. Um, as you know, this is the, what has become the ornament bag. I have a Rika bag that's also the ornament bag. It's fine. Um, I got this pattern. It's a free pattern from Shepherd's Bush and it comes with, I got it from, um, Needlecraft Corner. She sells the them kitted up. And it's called You Like the Sheep. You Better Not Pout. I can't really show it to you because there's no picture. Um, but it's got the called for... It's all weeks. And then... Oops. I am very impressed. I've gotten a couple little kits like this with free patterns and they don't write out the name, the color name, and Needlecraft Corner took the time to write out what color each one is, which is really great, particularly like when you've got guacamole and collards and, you know, grits and oatmeal, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's been really, really helpful. The called for is an 18 count natural night linen. I don't think that's what this is. It's like 
hellacious burlap. It is stiff and makes my hands feel funny and I don't like it, but I bought the kit, so I'm going to do it. And I started this a wee, maybe 10 days ago. It's my lunchtime project, so um, I got the tree done, except I have to fill in like these little ornaments, but I got the, hang on. There we go. So I got the tree done and you can see some of the red in there. And then this bottom part, so it's going to say, you better not, and then right in here it's going to say pout. Um, and then the sheep is pretty cute. And he uses oatmeal by Simply Wool. And it says to use one strand, but I've been using two, and I should have just enough. Um, because I've got this much left, but you can see I'm almost done his little body. Um, I just, I didn't like it with one, so I figured I would use two, and if we had to fudge it, we had to fudge it. But, like, in the sheep here, this is really where I am, and that's all that's left, so I should have just enough. Um, and then it came with a shepherd's bush, um, it came with a little button, it's a little stocking, and apparently you're supposed to put the stocking, hang on, we'll, we'll, we'll investigate together because I don't think I'm going to use the stocking. You're supposed to put the stocking Dead air time, just what you guys always wanted. There we go. We'll just put the needle through. Smart girl. So the stocking is supposed to go there. I guess it's kind of cute. Tell me, should I use a stocking or not? This is going to be for my dad. Um, it's going to be one of my grandmother's 20 ornaments. This definitely costs me much more than she pays me, but my dad loves sheep. So it was like the perfect thing. Um, so... Tell me what to do. I'm looking for advice. Um, I should finish this this week without a problem. And then Rocio found some cute little tiny Christmas ornaments for me. Um, and we got them. I got them on eBay for pretty cheap. And I'm going to do a couple of those this week because they should be very, very fast. Um, because this is number 12. Um, and then I also have the Mill Hill Shamrock. Uh, that I want to do. My grandmother has claimed she's keeping this one. This is going to be ours. Uh, she keeps one of the 20 every year. So that's the one she wants. And then I have a new start that I did not need. Um, so I watch. So Michelle McGraw, um, some of you may have come over from her. She did mention me in her last YouTube. Last tube. Thanks, Michelle. You're the best. Uh, she's from outside Charlotte and we've become good friends. We text a lot. I bother her and ask her for advice. Um, and she just finished by um, Country Magic Stitch um, Mordor. They are like a little, this is the Shire. So they're like movie posters of different scenes and um country magic stitch has a website now the she also sells on etsy by the way actually hang on i'm going to interrupt this story of whips to talk to you about my issues with the internet so if you all remember a few months ago i ordered scroll rods it took me forever to get my money back i had to open a dispute with um paypal it was a huge thing then i ordered from a very well known local needlework shop that is not local to me. It is um, in a different part of the country and I ordered one of their like quarterly boxes just to try it and I ordered that on July 12th. I haven't gotten it yet. 
I assumed that if you ordered this box and I checked that you would just get whatever that quarterly, like they would have a, a, a number of them and they would send it out and then you could decide if you were going to get the next one or not. So on August 12th, when I still hadn't heard anything, I emailed and said, hey, I placed an order about a month ago. I never heard anything. What's going on? I'm lying to you. I did that September 12th. So it was two months. No response. It's fine. That end of that week, I called the store and sent another email. And it turns out they were having a large event that weekend. So of course I did not hear anything. So then I called again and I got the owner of the shop who was a witch on the phone. Again, not going to mention the store. There was a large event though, so I'm sure you can make your assumptions. Um, I said, hi, I ordered on July 12th, your quarterly box. I just wanted to know, like, is it coming? Did it get lost? I never got shipping information. It's been, you know, two and a half months. And she said, well, they're not going out until the end of September. And I said, oh, okay, that's fine. I had sent a couple emails and I just, I didn't know. And she's like, well, it's on the website. Do you want your money back? And I was like, well, I didn't ask for my money back. I was just asking a question. I will never order from that shop again. And when I got off the phone and I was so flummoxed by why I would be spoken to so rudely when I was simply asking if or when my order was coming after a couple emails that I didn't get a response to, I probably should have taken my money back and let the store eat the credit card fees. But <laughs> I didn't. Um, I still, it's now the 27th of September. I still haven't gotten the shipping notice for that quarterly box and I'll never order from that shop again. And if anybody wants to know who it is, you can either message me on Instagram, Katie Stitching, or email me at katherclar at gmail.com. I'm not here to bash shops. I'm just telling you the experience that I had and that I was very disappointed. I have heard from others that there's been issues and that shipping can be very, very slow. Um, and I get it. They're busy. But it's hard. I don't have an LNS and I want to support local needle workshops. But, you know, 123 Stitch, I ordered a ton of beads for my Mirabilias and they accidentally sent me a pack of leaves instead of one of the beads. I called, someone answered the phone, they put it out the next day, there was no issues. I mean, customer service is important. You work with a small store instead of a big box store so that you can have good customer service and that you can support them. And now, on to my next online shopping experience. Also, I think I should be done online shopping. So, as you know, I'm kind of into, like, quilting and sewing, and there's a line of Jane Austen fabrics that just came out. Um, Missouri Star has them and a couple other places. And I found them on Etsy from a quilt shop in Utah. And they were on sale for like $65 in free shipping for the 20 piece fat quarter pack instead of like 71. They were like 10% off. And I was like, sold to me. Then the store went out of business, never got my fabric, had to open a claim with Etsy. Um, also, I'll say this I understand why store owners are leaving Etsy, but the to get my money back from Etsy was like this. I had it back in five days. Um, so I understand why store owners are leaving Etsy, but I definitely, as a consumer, um, Etsy was one of the best experiences I've had with having to get money back during this pandemic. Um, all that to say, <laughs> these are digital PDFs um, from Country Magic Stitch. And she has 10 for The Lord of the Rings, and then she has a couple for Harry Potter. They're a little cheaper on her website, like 40-ish cents. I'm assuming that's what she must pay Etsy to sell them. Um, and then if you spend a certain amount of money, you get a discount off. So I sent my dad and my brother and my uncle were in a group text, and I sent a message and I said, Hey, you could live anywhere in the Lord of the Rings Hobbit universe where would you live? And my dad said, the Shire. So I got in the Shire. But because I have no chill, I got all of the Lord of the Rings ones because I figured I'd start with this. And then 
I could move on and do the rest of them one a holiday for Christmas and his birthday for a couple years. Um, he's really hard to shop for. He's just about, he'll be 60. Oh God, he'll be 60 in February. Gotta throw a party in a pandemic. Anyway, he'll be 60. Um, and you know, I get him clothes and stuff, but like he doesn't need anything. He's, he's 60. So I thought this was perfect. Michelle has done several of them and several of the Hogwarts ones and they look great. Um, so I got 12 patterns for $25 after all the discounts. Um, so highly recommend. Also the pattern is really easy to read. Um, I'll just show you. I printed out the color for these ones. I usually do the color for the full coverage, but like it's really easy. It's great. It's only a couple colors. Um, the what is it? Two, four, six, eight, nine, eighteen colors. Uh, it's all DMC. It's fourteen count Ada. And I started this so Friday. I kit it up from stash, and then I went to Joanne's yesterday to get the rest. And this is just like. I don't know, about an hour of stitching. I am doing tent stitch on 14 count Ada with four strands. And I think the coverage is pretty good. Particularly, I'm going to, I say that I'm going to have these framed. I'll probably frame it myself, but I am going to put this behind glass because my dad's a man and he lives alone and he never dusts. So if I don't want it covered in dust and when I get it back someday, I would like it to not be covered in dust. So. Um, I pulled, I don't have any 14 count white Ada. I had a birth announcement, a Winnie the Pooh birth announcement that I bought when I was like 18 that I've never used. So I just opened it and stole the Ada from that. This is 14 count. You can see it says Disney right there. Um, so I think there might be enough to do, uh, there's not going to be enough to do two. Um, and then when I was at Joann's yesterday, I was just going to buy a big roll of 14 count Ada and they didn't have it. So, um, these are staying in this bag from, I think it's Fat Quarter Shop. I won this from Stitching with the Sisterlies. There's three of them. I have the, so you can definitely tell I pulled from Bobbins, uh, and look at how janky that is. Ugh. So I don't use bobbins anymore. I don't bobbinate. Um, and this is why. Because it looks awful. Um, like, I just, I don't, it's like curly hair. I love curly hair, but it looks like my floss shouldn't look like curly hair. Um, so, so pretty. I just have it on a ring. I made floss tags. Uh, I'm going to show you how I did that. So that is my other whip. And then I'm going to work on that a little bit on and off this week. Um, I've got it on one of those, uh, uh, magnetic boards, uh, which has been making it really easy. Um, one of the things Michelle said about these was that they're big patches of color, which has been really great. Um, so country magic stitches, I highly recommend. All right. And then I have one other whip that's actually a sewing whip. So it may not seem like I've been... Ooh, ooh, hang on. It may not seem like I've been stitching that much. And it's because I have been working on these fabric books. <laughs> They've been... I think I've told you about them. They've been taking forever. Um, I did four yesterday of these ones. Aren't they cute? Oh, I love the pictures. Oh, I love it so much. Um, so these ones, the blue, which is the, the nativity story, have not been bad. But twas the night before Christmas, on the other hand, I actually emailed Hobby Lobby because I bought a whole bolt. Like, I bought 14 of them. So that's 14 yards of Twas the Night Before Christmas. When the bolt was laid out, it was wrong. They were all different sizes. 
And the nice thing, what's supposed to be the nice thing about this one is you can see where you should sew. Like there's a line for you to follow. Um, and these are the most expensive ones of the three. Only a dollar more, but a dollar on 14 is $14. I was like having to rip out and you could sew like here. You can see like the line, like that line there. Nobody will notice it but me. But like these were taking me between 35 and 45 minutes each. Whereas these ones took 25. I pre-cut all of them. Um, I didn't sew all of them of any of them, but I pre-cut them all. Except for I kept one whole of each for myself someday if I'm to have children. They're whole. <laughs> And then I have extras, um, but it's frustrating because like I'm just, I'm not selling all of them, but I'm selling some of them and you don't want to sell something that's not perfect. So it's been, that's been difficult. Um, so yeah. All right. Let's talk quickly about my plans. I'm going to be 34 on October 16th. So I should see you before then. Um, and I was talking to... So I watch Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. Sidebar, you guys. She follows me on Instagram. And it's like having a celebrity follow you. Um, but hang on one second. Why can't I? Okay. Okay. So she is working on Celtic Autumn and Melanie Watkins. Um, and she is, I want to say, soulful, hang on, soulful underscore planning stitcher on Instagram. Uh, I drop into her DMs sometimes. Hi, Melanie. Um, she's working on, I want to say, Celtic Winter. And I messaged her and I was like, I think I'm going to start Celtic Autumn on October 1st because my birthday is October 1st or October 16th. So it'll be a birthday start. So I have this lovely, this is 32 count Belfast in taupe and it is lovely. And then I am doing a color conversion. So here are her colors. Except for this one. I don't know what that's for. There they are. Don't they look great? Yay! So I'm starting that um, on October 1st. So that's my plans. And I can't wait. Uh, and then obviously ornaments, ornaments, ornaments. Um, and then I have all of the Celtic ladies. Um, so I'll be doing a Celtic lady for a long time. I really like the lavender and lace patterns I've discovered. I do need the beads. I don't have any of those. Okay, now let's talk haul. It's not as bad as it sometimes is. Um, first, I told you that I've been stitching in bed. So I got a flu shot on Tuesday at CVS. I was shopping at CVS and the pharmacist literally walked up to me and was like, hey, did you get your flu shot yet? And I said, no. She said, do you want to get it now? And I said, sure. And I did. They put it up very high on my shoulder and she hit the muscle in a big way. I couldn't use my arm for two days. That was fun. But I also got a $5 off 20 coupon. So I bought myself a pillow buddy. And this is for, you can put your cell phone, put your Kindle, put your pattern, and you just drop it in bed with you. And I love this thing. At the time, I didn't know that there are other colors. There's like a gray and some pretty colors. I got this ugly blue from the As Seen on TV section. But I, I'll probably make a cover for it someday. But I highly recommend. This is great. Love it. The cover does come off. There's a zipper here. Um, so it can be washed. Love it. 
And I think after all my coupons and everything, it came down to like $10. Money well spent. I wouldn't pay $20 for it, but $10. All right. Then another one of my Mill Hill kits came in. This is um, Harvest Wagon. It's a little wagon with pumpkins on it. Very cute. It's another magnet one. My monthly um, Missouri Star Quilt Company's quilt block came in. Still never opened any of them. Someday I'll have the courage. And then Rocio and I went on a hunt because we had, is it FOMO? When you're like sad that you didn't get something. I was sad that I didn't get this. And Rocio found them. She found there were two left from Country Stitchers. Um, I want to cut the sticker out. I just can't figure out how. So I got Coming to America. This is not kitted at all. I just, as soon as I saw it, I was like, order now. I know you've all seen this before and people are working on it. My plan is I'm going to start this next year when the Mayflower left and do it over the 66 days. So a big part of why I wanted it was the bonus chart, Harvest Blessings. Isn't that cute? This I hope to do before Thanksgiving. Um, and that's, it's all by Brenda Gervais. It's my first Brenda Gervais pattern. You get a needle minder and I really wanted the lady and that's who I got. Isn't she cute? I love it. Uh, it came with a floss ring and also this is a three inch corner gauge to put on your floss ring. I have been wanting a corner gauge so I'm really excited about this. And then it also, oh you can take this out. So there's a corner gauge. If anybody has um, a great corner gauge that they really, really love, let me know. And then for when you frame it, it came with a little tag, which I love. Love, love I love. The packaging was just super cute. It was worth every penny. Love it. I'm glad I ended up getting it. Then it came with um, some fabric from William Bradford. It's from his diary and this is to um, finish the back of the pillow. Um, and then they translated, not translated, but they made it easier to read what was on the fabric. And then the best part of course is the beautiful pattern. And it is beautiful. Coming to America. And then it's a nice color pattern. Um, it's beautiful. It was beautifully packaged. Um, I should have ordered it right in the beginning, but I was like, oh, I don't want it. And then people started showing it and I was like, I want it. So I'm glad I found it. It is hard to find. Um, so good luck. <laughs> I wouldn't know where to tell you to find it. Um, but I do recommend. So let me let me put all this away. So that's my like expensive piece of haul. Well, not really. So with my pillow, I used a 14 count Ada that I pulled from Stash that I got when I first started stitching. Or no, it might have been from the gift bags that I got from Sarah from Sarah K Stitching. I don't remember, but it's from Stash. And I was like, man, Ada for stitching in hand is great. And not all Ada is like that crappy stuff that came in my birth announcement from Joann's. So I decided I wanted to try some more. And a woman on Stash Unload had, um, she put up a lot of Ada for like $35. I got it like that. So she, these are three just um, 14 count that she had tea dyed. So they're all like a good sampler color and they're pretty big pieces, you know. But then there was, this is a 16 count white 
just, you know. And then some scraps just for like little ornaments. These are all just mystery, no color. They're all hand dyed by some company. But it also came with, this is a 14 count fabric flare historic beige. Another mystery. And this is a 20 count vintage country mocha. I've never had vintage country mocha. Everybody talks about it, now I have some. And then this is picture this plus Ren, also 18 count Ada. So I wanted to build up a little bit of an Ada stash so that if I could see if I liked it or not. And then my floss of the month came in from Threads Entwined. It's blue this month. Yay, I can't wait to add this to my collection. Thank you, Trish. And then, so a friend was getting rid of old patterns and sent me um, her, a bunch of her old stuff. This is many, many, many moons ago. And one of them was a Prairie Schooler Santa, and this is the 2015 Santa. And I was like, oh, I can't wait to do that. And then Jen Lee and her mom started doing all of them for a prairie schooler tree. And I was like, ooh, but you can't find them all. Well, I found a lot of the prairie schooler Santas on eBay for like, I think it was 13 for $50. So I got 1990, 92. 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 2000, 2003, 2006, and 2007. And then I also have 1985. I got this one for a dollar plus two or three dollars shipping. Um, that's 1985. And then I have the rest in my like um, one, two, three stitch wish list. Um, so my goal for next year is to do these for me um, and then maybe also a couple of them for my grandmother's ornaments. So yesterday Joanne's is having the two low to show it's 44 cents floss sale. So I got prayer schooler colors. This will be a 2021 start though. Um, I'm just collecting for now. And I think, oh, so Alex, um, congratulations again. Alex is having a little baby. Um, she made floss tags on her Cricut and I wanted to get a Cricut last year and I did not. It's just a little too expensive, but I was like, I wonder if I could find something to make them. Enter Michaels. I just bought some um, scrapbooking paper. And that's a little fall. I love them. They're great. I'm constantly trying to figure out the best way to store my floss on a project. So that's the new way we're trying. Um, so that's that. And then... I decided with my the, the books, I'm going to wrap them in craft paper and then make a big tag and write like from Santa or whatever. Um, so lots and lots of stitching, lots to do, big plans. Um, and then today my brother is on his way. He's coming from Carlisle with his wife. He's going to take air conditioners out of the windows and we're going to order lunch. My dad's going to come down. We're going to sit on the back porch. Uh, and then tomorrow I go back to work. So, busy, busy, busy. <laughs> I hope you guys are well. I hope you enjoyed catching up with me. I'm sorry, as always, that I'm all over the place. I hope you're safe, and I hope you're well, and I will talk to you soon. <sighs> Bye!